Whatever happened at home stayed at home. She took care of everything, took care of the kids, you know, banking account and everything else. And we got to arguing in the parking lot. <laughs> And everybody was lined up next to the windows in the <laughs> shop watching us argue. He'd point his finger and hit that car. If the high school had kept records of notes for excused absences, Richard Petty got me out of more classes. <laughs> he didn't even know how many classes he got me out of. I got really good signing his name on that. <laughs> it's just one copy. That's right. Okay, I can't compare him to any of his kin people. I was ascending a little bit, and I had won a few races, but he was Richard Petty, and, it, and, it and he was, was at the end of his same career. Same way when I started. I yep. never raced with my dad. Yeah. I was in a bunch of races with him. Exactly. But I never had to race with him yeah. because he was winning races, and I was just starting. And then over a period of time, I kept moving up, getting a little bit better. Yes, no, it's set in the middle, So we, and we'll talk to you. Kyle the most alike? You, Miss Linda, Lee, Elizabeth? You I'm the to describe Kyle. I'm the most like Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they just one Kyle Pig. That's right. Okay. What? He, I can't compare him to any of his kin people. Okay? Whether it's his mother, his daddy, his sisters, there's... He's just different. <laughs> I like to think that I'm the best of everybody. <laughs> so yeah. you get yeah. the package. He gets, a, he gets a little bit of everybody. Yeah, yeah I, I like to think that. Um, did Kyle, was he a good kid? Did he ever get in trouble? He never got into real big trouble. Just enough to be aggravated. You know I mean, <laughs> from, yeah. that, from that standpoint. I mean, the teachers would call and they'd have to go down talk to them, everything pretty good for a week, and then they'd call him again. And he was mischievous, I put it that way. Instead of breaking things, he just disturbed things, yes. just like he does now. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's hard to believe I could have the lowest grade average, but still be the teacher's pet. <laughs> That's the way I looked at it. So, Mr. Turner... See, Mr. Turner, my first grade teacher, Miss Morgan, my second grade teacher, Miss Bullum, my third grade teacher, Miss Miss uh, Goodrum, fourth grade teacher, Miss Hilton, that lived down the road here, fifth grade, Miss Plummer, Miss Toombs, yeah. Aunt Sarah was my sixth grade teacher, Mr. O'Brien, my seventh grade teacher, Miss Davis, my eighth grade teacher. Okay, yeah. I can go through them all, man. I, yeah. I know them all. Does your dad know that Miss Swiggett called your mom? <laughs> Listen, so here's, my dad probably know. you ask if, if, if my dad knows if Miss Swiggett called my mom. I would say it's more like this, that he could probably name the teachers that didn't call more so than the people <laughs> from the school that did I, call. I that, they put right. it that way. That, there were fewer, so it was easier to remember the, the fewer amount of people. RP, do you ever remember receiving any phone calls while you were out of town? from Miss Linda because Kyle had gotten in trouble. No, that was one thing about our relationship. Whatever happened at home stayed at home. She took care of everything. Took care of the kids, you know, banking account and everything else. But she looked after the kids so that when I get home, then I wouldn't have to. Yeah. Because she wanted me and the kids to be real friends. <laughs> yeah. You know, be daddy and mother, son, whatever. And uh, so she took she took care of all the punishment. She never had to threaten, wait till your daddy gets home. He'll, he'll straighten you out. She never done that. Yeah. Remember, we grew up in the 30s and 40s. No, wait a minute. That was the 60s. No, it was a different time. Okay. So, <laughs> and, and it was. So, and, and mama did. And we talked, we've talked about it a million times that when he might be gone um, for two weeks at a time, yeah. Yeah. sometimes longer because you would run two or three races a week, uh, especially when we were growing up, when we were five, six, seven, eight years old into in the early to mid 60s. So it wasn't, not like it is now. It's hard for people to to marriage what, marry what racing is now and what racing was yeah. then as, as far as being gone. So yeah, mama looked after, she looked after pretty much everything. <laughs> yeah, pretty Definitely. much everything. So were you at home when he drove the motorcycle down the road when he wasn't supposed to? I was at home. Yes. When all of a sudden I heard the dogs bark, 
I looked out, and there were two patrol cars. I said, uh-oh. So I went out there, and they had Kyle Corner, and uh, they said he'd been on the road. What happened? I had a cousin live down the road, and uh, he'd usually go down the power line or back in the woods yep. and cross the road because he lived on the other side of the road. For some reason, uh, well, I guess he'd done it before the police just caught him this time. Uh, it was anyhow, our first time. He come out, come out and got on the road heading home. Well, he saw the state man, so he made a right hand turn to go back to where he usually gets. Well, I think they did they chase you down. There was, no, there was another one down there. Oh, there was. He was down there blocking it. So there was two. There was two. There was two. Of there was two of them. Yeah. So what happened was, yeah. So used to I would go out from the house, down beside the the pasture there, down the hill, across the creek, up into the power line, run the power line down um, to the dirt road that was beside the new barn. Yeah. And then you'd come up by the new barn and ride through the corner of that field and cross and go down Uncle Bottle's driveway. And so you had to be home by dark. Yeah. So it was 6.39 dark. It was, it, was, it was almost dark 30, you know what I mean? So I didn't have time to go back down the field, back down the road beside the new barn, back down the power line. This is his story. Down. So I just hung a left and headed down the road. And it can't be how far is it, a half mile? At the most. Yeah. At the most, it's yeah. a half mile. So I'm like, man, I can, I'll blast down this road a half mile. So I wheel out and start and just past the new barn as the road kind of gives a little bend. There he was. Um, sitting on the side of the road. He was out of his car. So I just wheeled around and went back to the new barn and went down the road. And the other guy was in his car, but he had the road <laughs> blocked completely. So then I was caught. So then he made me go back out to where the other guy was. And he said, uh, we're going to take you home. And I said, okay. I mean, what are you going to say? I was... Couldn't have been eight or nine. Probably yeah. something like that. And so I said, okay. And he said, um, just push your bike over here. And I said, no, sir. I, I can't leave my motorcycle. And he said, well, you're going to have to leave it. And I said, I'm, I can't leave it. And I said, because there's a trailer park right here, and it'll be gone when I come back if I, if I leave it. And he said, okay, follow us. So one got in front, <laughs> one got behind. And I'm eight years old, and I'm riding up the highway, past the race shop, past Grandma and Granddaddy's house, up to the driveway. I told him where I lived. He turned in. And when we came down the driveway, then he came out to meet us. Did, you get, did, did you get in trouble? Um, I don't think I got to ride for a while. Um, I, not, not on the road, anyway. Yeah, not, yeah, I don't think I got to ride for a while. Um, trouble... It was trouble, but I mean, they were pretty nice about it. They, they were they were they pretty were. nice about it. They were they were not. And I mean, it's not like they put me in the back in handcuffs and. Tried and the to put reason me. they was there was the people that lived in Trader Park was complaining. Yeah. And why they was complaining? Because he wasn't bothering nobody. But so here's why the people, people. So let me tell you why the people in the trailer park were complaining. Okay. So the people in the trailer park were complaining because right up the road there, um, there was a race shop. And these guys would put these race cars together and then pull them out on the highway. And they would actually drive the race cars down the freaking road past these trailer parks, running wide open. So I, I guess they had reason to complain, did they not? They might have been waiting on this. That's so what they, I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an innocent bystander here. Well, what They was, were profiling. What was, really, what was really good was that there was one lady down there. Yeah. No matter... If you went down the road, she would call the police. It didn't make any difference. And the state man. And the state man, no matter where he was at, if he was sitting up a quarter of a mile, he made sure we was back in the shop, had yeah. the car in the garage, turned off, and then he'd come and then see he'd it. come. Yeah. So he had to follow up uh, any complaint anybody had. He had to write it down. Say, okay, I took care of it. I didn't see nobody we never on did the either. road. We never I did went either. to the shop. The car was sitting in the garage. No way it was on the road. Yeah. So I didn't see anyhow, it. Yeah, they, they looked after us pretty good. Yeah, they did. <laughs> that, is that, that's the one time you caught him, or 
he was there when you got in trouble? Was that one of the only times? That might have been, that might have been the only time. Did you um, get, were you mad? That, did, you, no, did you ever get mad at him? No, I didn't get mad at him. You know I mean, I mean, I was I used to be a kid too. Okay, you know what I mean. And uh, it was just uh, I put it this way: he just got caught. Yeah. I mean, if he if he'd have been riding up down the road, I wouldn't talk nothing about it because there really was not that much traffic. That's that's what you I was getting ready to say. So and, we lived we lived on the road. Uncle Mars, uh, you us, Grandma and Granddaddy. Um, what's your, what's her name? Lived across the road. Um, in the house, right, right, right off the end of the driveway. Elsie, Elsie, yeah, she lived there. You had the Jacksons that lived up on uh, on the deal, and then until the trailer park moved in, you had Uncle Bottle, and then the Vickery, yep, and, and, tombs, and tombs, tombs at the bottom of the hill, and that that was it. There wasn't but seven eight houses on the road, so it was it was okay. We we you lived know? in the country, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, on the whole road. That was all the way to the county, and that was two and a half, three miles to the county, so there wasn't but seven or eight houses on the road. Say, have you ever been, have, has he ever been mad at you? Oh, yeah, plenty of times. <laughs> plenty of times. Remember what for? Not oh, the most recent time. Plenty of times. A um, little bit of everything. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of everything. We got. He got mad at me one time. We were working on, we were doing something at the race shop. Um, <laughs> we were doing something. We were switching to Ford. You were going somewhere else. Um, that had to be 84, 83, 84. Ford and Pitts and Ford, 69. Yeah. No, 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 no. Me, me going to oh, Ford. Oh, yeah. Me going to Ford, not you. Um, 84, because we'd gone out of the – because you were leaving. You were going to Curb. Yeah. You were going to Curb, and we were building the Fords. And he got mad about something. I can't remember what it was. And we got to arguing in the parking lot. Um <laughs> And everybody was lined up next to the windows in the <laughs> shop watching us argue. And um, he'd point his finger and hit that car, hit this old Ford, this um, Thunderbird that was sitting there. And I, he was on one side and I was on the other side. And when he'd move this way, I'd move this way. <laughs> and if he moved that way, I'd move back this way. One time he was at the hood and I was at the deck lid. <laughs> you know what I mean? And we just kept moving around. I don't even remember what that was about. Um, I know I'd, we'd done something. That was me and Mike Beam, and we were, they were listen, he was going to curb to drive, right? Yep. And I was, and, and, and basically it was us at Petty Enterprises, and we were all 23, 24 years yeah. old. So we just had a bunch of race cars, and we were 23, 24 years old, That's and that was way. it. Same, same way, way y'all were, yeah. Same we way y'all were. Same way. So it was. It, so they just left us there, and that was that was kind of it. We turned him loose, and he didn't. He, he didn't was, have a clue what was going on. He was. Now I will tell you one of the maddest he was at us. Um, this is Mike and him too. We were at Richmond, and we were supposed to go somewhere and do something, and we decided we weren't going to go because we were twenty one, and we were. We knew more than everybody else. And we were in a restaurant, a little Mexican restaurant out beside that um, at Holiday Inn. You, you stay at over off, it wasn't Laburnum, but you'd go back out the racetrack and turn and go over to 64 there. Man, he come in that restaurant and he was mad at us. We went to where he told us to go. Yeah, we, we weren't going to go. <laughs> we, we had a lot of confidence. And we were pretty brave go, until he came in. Then, then we went where we were supposed to go. At what point? Did you Is this for me? Yeah, well, kind of like <laughs> at what point did you realize that your dad was rich like he was famous? Like at what So point? I, I say I was I, and this is what I've always said. Um what in, I think it might have been it was either Dennis Dennis it was either Dennis MacArthur or, I think you said it was Dennis. I, I think it was Dennis. Yeah. Um one day we were over at the, we were over playing around and y'all were going to Greenville the dirt race. And um, it was, had to be a Saturday because y'all just went down yeah. and qualified and raced. Yeah. So it had to be a Saturday. So Dennis and I climbed in uh, and went with him. And I don't think I realized that he was Richard Petty, but Dennis realized then. And Dennis used to come to the house all the time. Yep. I mean, Dennis lived at our house pretty much uh, because we, he lived up on the corner. So Dennis, back to the story, Dennis went with us. Dennis went with us to, to Greenville, and um, I think Dennis, because Dennis had older brothers, yeah. Gary, and 
he had he had a couple of older brothers, and Dennis was at the house all the time. But I, I don't. I think that's the first time that anybody ever mentioned it at, at school or anywhere else. Nobody ever said anything about it. Nobody ever. I just thought everybody's dad had a race car. You know what I mean? I, what did he, say? I, I, he just couldn't believe he was at a racetrack, and that with all those people, and with all the with all the people. Yeah. And listen, there was probably eight thousand people, maybe. At you know most. what I mean? Yeah, at the most at at that period of time. But there was my dad, and there was Bobby Isaac, and there was Pearson, and I mean, there were all these guys. And he knew more as much about them as I did because he his brothers and that that crowd they were fans, so they knew about it. So. It fascinated me that he knew about it because I didn't think anybody but us knew about it. You know what I mean? It was that kind of thing. Did you ever use Richard Petty to get out of trouble? The name. Listen, um, if, if, if they, no, but I'll tell you this story. I, I will tell you this story. If you, if Randleman kept records, if the high school had kept records of notes for excused absences, Richard Petty got me out of more classes. <laughs> he didn't even know how many classes he got me out of. I got really good. You know what I mean? Good enough that those people down there, I, I got by signing his name on that. Um, so that was pretty good. But I will tell you this. So one time I'm in Gainesville, Georgia. Gainesville, Georgia. And I'm with the Parks, with Doug, and with two of his friends. And... One of his friends, his dad was a doctor, and the other friend was Ed's partner. Was Ed's the partner? Business. So yeah. we were out. We were out. I was. Is it gonna ring? Is that what you're saying? Okay. So we were we were out, and um, it was it wasn't late. It might have been twelve thirty one o'clock in the morning. I don't know. Maybe a little later than that. I was fourteen. I was maybe fourteen. Because Doug's got to be a couple years older than me. So he would have been probably a junior or senior in high school. So we were out, and they had been, they had had a few beers. Okay? They? Not, they, they, they. They were not drunk. They were not drunk. Nobody was drunk. I hadn't had anything. I was 14, maybe 13. I don't know. Anyhow, so it's 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning, 1 30. So we're in a red Volkswagen. And they pull up to a stoplight, and the light's red, and we pulled all the way through the stoplight and just kept going. And we hadn't gone 100 feet, and there were blue lights everywhere, blue lights everywhere. And so it was a state, state patrol, and even though we were right out towards where the lake is coming out of, out of town there, I'm not going to mention the town, that, that um, so they, we were in the great state of Georgia, I will say that. So they took us out to the patrol station. The state patrol had an office out across the, the lake there, close to where they had their, their lake house. So they take us inside and they put us in a cell, all four of us, okay? Because they're gonna teach us a lesson. They're gonna teach us a lesson. So um, <laughs> it's like, by this time it's three in the morning, I guess. So we're there and they let us set for a little while, you know, and those other boys are like, man, man, we're in trouble. I'm not in trouble. I didn't do anything. You know what I mean? I'm good. So, um, <laughs> so they come, finally one of the guys comes back there and he says, um, um, I need to know, I've got your names and your, your addresses and stuff. And he's looked at Doug and he said, is your dad, and he, he said Doug's name, dad's name, and he said, Doug said, yes, sir. And he said, do you think he'd be proud? No, sir. So he asked the other kid, and he said, is your dad such and such? And he said, yes, sir. He said, would your dad be proud that you're in? No, sir. And he said, uh, went to the next one, and he said, your dad is doctor. He said, yeah. And he said, should we call your dad? And he said, no. He said, please don't. And he said, what about you, son? And all three of them, almost in unison, said, oh, you're going to love this one. Because I didn't have any ID. I was, I was 14, 15. I didn't have any ID. He said, you're going to love this one. So he asked me the question. I told him who it was. So he didn't believe it. So they kept us another two hours. The check on me. 
They kept us another, no joke, they kept us another two hours, okay? So at 5.30, 6 o'clock, they had a shift change. And one of, the, one of the state patrolmen that came in evidently knew Doug's family and said, oh, sure, he's in town. And they're like, you're kidding, right? And they're like, no, we're not kidding. He's in town. You know what I mean? And it's like, so they let me go. They let us all out of jail. So I, we spent probably four hours, four or five hours, just sitting in a cell at a state patrol office. <laughs> so I I tried to use his name to get me out of trouble, but it got me an extra two hours in jail, <laughs> if that's the answer to your question. All right. What about the boot barn and Charlie One Horse? Can you give us you know a what? history of so I, I, So here's what happened. There was a movie called Urban Cowboy. Remember, remember that? And everybody wanted cowboy boots. So mama had an antique store, a uh, blue hobby horse down the street here. So we got up with the Tony Llama people first, I think. And then Justin, the Justin people. We just started selling boots out of the back. And then a guy came by wanting to sell cowboy hats. So we didn't have room to sell cowboy hats. Remember how it was just a little yeah. place. Didn't have room to sell no, anything. She just gave you a corner. Yeah. So we didn't have room to sell anything. So then um, he ended up with a, he needed a cowboy hat. So the guy gave you a cowboy hat and that's been... Golly, 80s. 78. Yeah, golly, that's yeah. been forever. Yeah. It's been 50 years. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? I mean, almost when you look at it. Um, but it was just, it was an accident. Now, before that, he wore, a, he wore, remember that old, um, he had an old black hat. Yeah. Uh, with a flat brim yeah. and a round, yeah. round thing. And then, and then off and on in the early 70s, there's, there's photos with, with a hat because R.J. Reynolds was in rodeo. Yeah. And yeah. in that's where the belt buckles came from. Yeah. From winning yeah. championships, R.J. Reynolds would give belt buckles for winning the championship, and he won so many championships in the '70s that he had the championship belt buckles. So the hat and the cowboy boots just came natural to that. Um, but the Charlie One Horse deal, I guess it came through that. Yeah. And I had forgotten that until I heard you tell that story because yeah. I didn't remember that's where it selling a bunch of that stuff. I know I, that's, that's crazy. So I'm, I'm going to piggyback off of that because I've seen that picture of that big wide brim with yeah. The, it's, it, like yeah. the look is not right. It's Amish. It, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's not right. It, yeah. it doesn't make Richard Petty, but like that hat was that the first one that you were was the Charlie One Horse? That, that, no, that wasn't no. Charlie One Horse hat. No, 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 no. no, no, no. no, no but the Charlie, the Charlie One Horse. So Kale had a cowboy hat. You had a cowboy hat. There were a couple guys that yeah. had them um, because of R.J. Reynolds. Yeah. But okay. but they were not. They were just, most of them were just straw hats. Yeah, most of them were straw summer, hats. Summer until, hats. Yeah, until these yeah. came along, until the felt hat. Nobody wore a felt hat. So at what point was it, was that style with this, because it's the same the, the, style, the, was that like the first go around? The, the, first, the first time that he gave Kyle a hat to give to me was something like this. Yeah, feathers, had a lot of feathers. Had, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, every one of them was a little bit different. Got a different feather, a different bone or something on it. So they never make two alike. Yeah. You know what I mean? And but anyhow, the first ones were this this was the model. And they'd never changed their model. Yeah. yeah. It's always been Especially for a, him. a different one. Yeah. When I first put it on and started wearing it, I just liked it. I liked the design, I liked the way it was folded, you know, and all everything on it. And uh, I think then um I, I don't know if I ever bought one, okay? <laughs> because Somehow or another, we was in Chicago, and they were in Chicago at that time, uh, out, out, out of town anyway. And uh, so I just went up there to meet the guy. So we sat down and cut a deal. And uh, he said he would furnish the hats. Anytime I needed a hat, just call him and they'd give me a hat. And uh, so first thing you know, you got 10 or 15 hats. And uh, somebody comes by doing... Uh, some kind of a deal to, you know, help somebody. Uh, and so we just give it to different situations where they auction them off. Yeah. And uh, so I'd sign and wear them a while, and I'd get a new one. So, you know, then I'd sign that one, give it to the hard fund or yeah. something, you know what I mean? But as far as I know, most of, most of their hats, most of Charlie One Horse's hats, they come preformed. Um, yeah. They're performed at the factory where there are other brands that when you go into a hat store, 
Yeah. It is just they steam them and press and them and fold them the way you, you want to. Like you want but to. this was the fold they came with. Yeah. This was the form so they came with from the very they beginning. Stayed with the they make different forms, obviously, but this was the one that's always been his deal. So it's almost like it was meant to be. Yeah, exactly. My only racing one was what are some memories that you guys have racing together, like yeah. father and son racing together? Like what are your we, memories of that? We never raced together. Yeah, we never did. <laughs> we was in the same race. Oh. Yeah. Because I was, no, that's true, that, and that's yeah. hard for people to understand. That's far, that's hard for people to understand, yeah. because because here's the way it works. When I started, he was here, and I was here, and then by the time he retired, twelve years later, we had passed somewhere, and I was ascending a little bit, and I w had won a few races, but he was Richard Petty. Yeah. And, and he was, was at the end of his same career. Same way when I started. I yeah. never raced with my dad. Yeah. I was in a bunch of races with him. Exactly. But I never had to race with him yeah. because he was winning races, and I was just starting. And then over a period of time, I kept moving up, getting a little bit better, but never enough, good enough to run with him. And then yeah. he, re he got hurt at Daytona, and he retired. So the time I started hitting my stride, he wasn't there anymore. Yeah. So, like I say... Was in races together, same with him. And we I was never raced each other. We would have probably we would have probably gone through a phase where we raced each other. Yeah. If we'd it stayed at the same place. Yeah. If we stayed at the same shop. Um, because we would have had equal equipment and the same. But as I moved out and went to the Wood Brothers and then the Felix, then the stuff I was in was pretty good stuff. And they had struggled a little bit. So we just got we got in we ended up in different places. It's we say it all the time, the and and it sounds, it sounds like a crazy, idiotic saying, but the worst place to watch a race is being in the race, yeah. because you don't see anything. Yeah. You only see what's in front see of you, that. and you see what's behind you. You don't see if the if the leader is somebody else, you don't see them. If the twentieth place is way back there, you never see them. You just don't see these people. You can run all day long on a racetrack with 40 cars and only see seven or eight cars. I mean, that's just the way the day, a day can be sometimes. And I know that sounds extremely crazy to most people because they sit in the grandstand and watch 36 or 40 cars, whatever it is, go around in circles. But you can't see anything. You can't see anything from, from inside a race car. That's why you, you just don't watch a race. You hear drivers say at times, yeah, we were back there running our race. Yeah. You're only running against because cars. you're only running against your gas. That's right. I was going to say, when, when was the first time you flipped a car? You remember the first time you flipped one? I never flipped a car. I don't think I ever got, got over on my, not in the, like, not, not. Anytime. Yeah, not in a, <laughs> not, not, race not in a race, not in a race. <laughs> I, I think we, I, th I got up on a, on my side and d d at a driving school, uh, broke a hub or something. And out, we're out at Sonoma, Sonoma, Sears Point. Yeah, driving one of those Bondurant cars. Yeah. I think it broke a hub and it dipped in the dirt and it just rolled over on its side. You weren't running fast enough to do anything. You know what I mean? So, um, but I, I, I never got in. Um, I, I mean, I hit hard a lot. I mean, in different times, yeah. but never, never yeah, enough to get up in the air and roll days. over. And not, not like Daytona with you or yeah. going over the fence at Daytona and places like that. No, or Darlington, stuff yeah, like I, that. I turned so many over, I can't even remember. The first yeah, one. but they used to turn cars over. Yeah, yeah. That that was the time when they turned cars yeah. over. And and you just have to look at, you look at when somebody drove, and and we were talking about this the other day during one of the shift things, that fire was a problem, and then fire was no longer a problem, but now fire is a problem again. Yeah. These these cars flame up again. The you know oil, what I mean? The oil. The oil. Stuff. Yeah. The oil. Not, not the gas. Not, the oil. No, the oil will flame up because it's. It's just the flash point is different yeah. than what real oil was. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so the flash point is different. So you'll see them flame up under under the hood and stuff. But we didn't we didn't have that stuff. I mean, it was a rare thing. From there was a period in there of about thirty years or more where it was a rare thing to have a bad fire yeah. in the car. You'd have them in the pits. Yeah, you could have them in the pits yeah. where where raw fuel was on the ground or something would happen. But it was a rare thing to have them in the car once they came up with fuel cells and stuff. When did both of you feel like you were in your prime? Because you obviously won a lot of races in 67 or whatever, but did you feel like that was your prime? And when, what thing for you? I, my prime was my last year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, 
really, I, I don't, I don't think he ever looked at it. And even looking back, I don't, I don't think he could say, you know, 66, 67, 70, 75, you know, when you won championships and stuff, whether that was your prime or not. So I, I tell you the deal, deal with the driver, uh, is that the drivers start off and all they can see is the car. You know, let's drive the car, let's go win races. And as time progresses, they get a family, they get kids, and then they've got to thinking, well, I'm not always going to be able to drive this race car. I better start another business or find something else to do. So you go from here to begin with, and as you get older, it's not that you're not a better driver. You just you don't spend 24 hours a day thinking about driving. You start splitting that time up, and first thing you know, you're just spending four or five hours thinking about the race car, and you're thinking about the family. You're thinking about, you know, what am I going to do to invest my money? You know, am I going to go in business? So the distractions takes the driving ability away from people. They're probably the best they've ever been when they quit driving. They've gotten more experience, yep. and a lot of times they get too much experience because when you're younger, you see two cars together, even the whole lamp of that big, that's where you go. When you get older, you say, I can't go there. So your driving style is a little bit different. Yeah, I don't. That, that's a good question. But it, it's, it really, it's a tough question because especially as the sport changes, you, you I watch drivers and you say, I think, and I'm, I'm going to use a guy. I'm going I'm to use a driver, okay? I think M Martin Truex became a better race car driver because he got in better equipment. So it looks like his prime was late, but he was a better race car driver. He was a good race car driver to here. He just didn't have anything to win in. You, you know what I mean? So it, I think there, it, it just depends. So if you look at him, you say, okay, when were you in your prime? 67. Won 27 races, 10 in a row. Everything was downhill from there. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you. So my point is, my, my, but my point is, so at 30 years old, basically, he peaked. And everything was downhill for the next, even though after that, he won another 160-some races and six championships yeah. or something that, like that. You, that. you say that's your prime because that that's where you were at. better driver. So, Ten years after that, what I, than I was. At yeah, that it's a time. it's a crazy it's a crazy thing, and and this is the way, and this is a serious answer for this question is, you start and you got you got no experience, but you got a ton of desire, and you hope you have some talent, and somewhere like he said. The desire may wane a little bit because you lose the, some of the focus, but the experience and the talent will meet somewhere. And when those two meet, that's where your prime is. When the experience that you have for the talent that you have, and for some people, it meets way, way up here, and it may plateau. For some people, it just crosses and goes on within a year or 12 months. You just don't know. But that's when... That's when, when you say the peak, the peak is when the experience, when the experience and the talent meet, mm -hmm. and and how you can maintain that. And some people maintain it for a longer period of time. Some people maintain it for a short period of time. Um, and really, some people's peak passes before they ever get an opportunity to take care of it, right. to 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 With utilize. The equipment and stuff. Yeah, from yes. the equipment and where they're at. So it's just um, it's a weird. But you see it in all sports. You see that in baseball and basketball. and I mean, kids are prodigies when they're 17 or 18. But then by the time they get here, they get with the wrong team, and they spend three years in the major leagues, and then they, they go home, and it's like, what happened to that kid? Well, he's just in the wrong place. You know, and I've said this a million times. Mm -hmm. What if, what if, and whatever it's been now, 12 or 13 years, what if, they had sent Joey Logano packing when when he left 
when Gibbs fired mm-hmm. him. You know what I mean? When Gibbs fired him, what if they had just sent him packing? So there would be two more people that had won championships, and there'd be 32 more people that had won races, because he'd be sitting at home in Connecticut. But he hadn't peaked at that time. He was not in the right place. Right. He had the talent and he had the ability, but they hadn't they hadn't got there. Yeah. And he was with a team that didn't allow him I to. I think all that depends on fate. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it does. Okay. Yeah, it does. You know what I mean? So all the things have to come together. You do everything you can to make it work yeah. for you. But if it's not in the book, it don't happen. Yeah. So, I, And I'll give you another. And I'm, I'm going to say this. And this is, I'm going to say this, and this is not an excuse. Not an excuse. Okay? I don't I want anybody to, to, to think of that. He went to work. He worked at Petty Enterprises. And when, when he started driving and then Granny got hurt, they had to make it work. Had to. Had to make it work. Come hell or high water, you got to make that place work. Grandma and granddaddy's in Daytona Beach, and him and Uncle Mars come back, and they got to make that place work. And they went on in a couple of short years to win Daytona and championships in 64 and go on and on and on and on. And he did. He rode that horse all the way from the late 50s, early 60s, all the way for 20-some years in the same place. And then he went to drive for Curb, and then he came back. But I'm just saying, there's there's that little hiccup, but the same place, okay? So I started when Petty Enterprises was at a different place because it had nosed over and, then going down and was going down. Because 79, when we won Daytona, we didn't even have a full sponsorship with STP. If you go back and look at that car, had a car wash company, Southern Pride, on the side of it. So I ran here. A few races in 79, a few races in 80, 81, 82, 83. And then I went to drive for the Wood Brothers. The Wood Brothers had never run all the races. So it took us almost two years to get used to running all the races. You know what I mean? Because it's a different game. It is a different game than what, what to keep up with the engines. And then I was there for four years and then left there and went to drive for Felix, who was just starting a team. So we built a team up there, and I stayed there, may question, arguably, longer than I should, because it went like this and started down, and I started my own team. And then after I started my own team, I tried to build it, and then we came back here and tried to build something again. So I had never thought about it, and somebody laid that out to me the other day, and I thought, so I spent my whole, I spent 30 years building on the back side of here, building the Wood Brothers to run all the races, building Felix, building my own team, and then coming back here. So it's a different place. I didn't have the luxury to spend 20 years, 30 years in one place. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right, wrong, or indifferent. It doesn't make any difference. That goes back to fate and where you're at in that period of time. So you make the most of it, and that's all you do. That's a long answer. No, that's good. That's very educational. That's a very educational book. Question. You ever been in jail? Oh, have you ever been in jail? No. I've never been in jail. He's the only only pity I know that's ever been in jail. No, Granddaddy's been in jail. I thought Granddaddy had been in jail. Granddaddy pity? Yeah. I thought Grandma told us that story that they busted a chicken fighting thing up in Virginia and he needed 50 bucks to be bailed out. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he was in jail. I think they were just holding. No, they didn't go to jail. They yeah. arrested them all. They arrested them all. They arrested them all. And they just, they, they, they paid, had, they all of them paid the sheriff off and he, he yeah. let them go home. But they arrested them all. 